Hi friends, welcome back to my channel. If you're new, my name is Emily. Today's video is all about thrift flips. So these items are from the thrift store as well as a recent estate sale that I went to. I will have the video link in the description box if you're interested in watching it after this video. I also want to say that these are kind of farmhouse inspired. I just kind of went with what I was feeling as I did these thrift flips. So I really hope you guys enjoy and let's get started on these projects. For this project, we are going to be taking this rolling pin that I got at the thrift store and we're going to turn it into bookends. So in order to do that, we have to cut this rolling pin in half. Now because there is the metal rod in the middle holding the two ends in place, um, my husband is using this Japanese saw. If I'm, I don't know if that's the technical term for it. Um, if it is not the technical term, I will make sure to put it on the screen here what it is actually called. But he didn't want to use the miter saw or a table saw to cut it because of the metal piece in the middle. So he cut you know, a portion of it and then rotated the, ro the rolling pin, cut some more um, until we cut it in half. And then because the metal um, rod goes all the way through, he cut um, the metal piece a little shorter so that I could attach the, you know, the pin, the rolling pin sides to the rolling pin base. If you know what I'm, if you know what I'm trying to say here. So I attach this with star bond and it's just super glue with the accelerator. So I put the super glue on one piece and then the accelerator on the other. And then I hold it down for like five or 10 seconds and it is a very secure bond. So then I'm going to take wood glue and attach the rolling pin to these wood bases. These wood bases I got from Hobby Lobby. They're in a pack of four, I believe, for uh, maybe like $3, maybe. Um, so they're in like the unfinished wood section and I stained these an espresso brown a really long time ago and I never ended up, I never ended up doing anything with them. So. I'm crafting through my stash with this with this video for sure. Now the rolling pin already had kind of the antique vibe, but I just wanted to enhance it a little bit. So for the rolling pin portion, I am going to um, stain it with the antique wax, and you can see the difference that it you know it just richened up that rolling pin color. And then the base I'm painting black like black chalk paint. And then I'm also going to paint the, uh, what are these called? The handles, the rolling pin handles. I mix the chalk paint with water. So it's a looser mixture. And then I paint the handles and while it is still wet, I wipe it off so that it's more of like a washed look and, um, a distressed look without having to sand it. So once I get that done and I let them dry, I decided I wanted to add something else to the rolling pin itself. And I'm just using, it's the letterpress stamp set by IOD and I'm doing number one and number two on the sides of the rolling pin or both of the rolling pins. And I sealed up the base with polycrylic and I forgot to or no I sealed it with the antique wax um, instead of polycrylic and I forgot to show that but I really hope you guys like this one and let me know what you guys think For this project, we're turning this cutting board that I grabbed at, a, at a, an estate sale and we're going to turn it into a tray. So the first thing that we need to do, because it definitely has deeper cut marks, is give it a really good sanding on all the sides. So I believe I started with 120 grit and I worked my way up to 220. Once that was fully sanded, I did a faux stain look on this one as the base coat because I'm going to be painting um, the tray white and distress it back and I wanted a darker brown to you know 
be shown with the distressing versus the lighter brown that the um, cutting board was. So I'm just watering down some brown acrylic paint for that faux stain. I hit it with my heat gun, let it dry, and then I'm going to be doing two coats of white chalk paint on top. Um, before I do the white chalk paint, because I forgot, um, there were some deeper nicks in the cutting board than I realized. So once I stained it, you could really tell. And I just filled them with some spackle, let it dry, sanded it back, and it was perfectly good to go. So like I said, I did two coats of the white chalk paint. I did it on all four sides. And once that dried, I am going to put a stencil on um, the top of this tray. So I got these stencils from Essential Stencil. They did send me these stencils as well as some um, transfers that I will share on another video. This video is not sponsored by Essential Stencil. I do not have any affiliate links or anything like that. I did just want to share the product with you because they did send it to me and I really did enjoy using this product so I did want to share it as an option especially if you do not have a Cricut machine or any other type of cutting machine. These stencils are great. They have tons of options. This one that I am using is called the Grace Gratitude and Grit set. It is six stencils that you get and and I will have the link for you if you want to check this out at all. Um, again, this is not an affiliate link or anything like that, but I just wanted to share. And these stencils are really thick, so I once I centered them, I taped it down. And because I don't have a good stencil brush to use, I'm just using a makeup pad. Um, I use this when I do stencils with my Cricut to apply the paint and it works fine and it worked perfect with this as well. So look how good that came out. <laughs> I do just want to share with you that before I apply the polycrylic, I always do a light spray of a clear coat. Um, that way it just holds the the chalk paint in place and I don't get any smearing from my stencil. I do this all the time if I am doing any type of stenciling. So I did two coats of the polycrylic and then I attach these um, handles from Hobby Lobby and this is done. I really hope you guys like this one. I grabbed this rooster and hen from the thrift store a while ago and my plans were to do a faux cement look on them and that's exactly what I end up doing. So I did a, a base coat with black chalk paint um, because I didn't want any of the other color poking through. So once that dried, I decided instead of doing baking soda like I've done in the past, I was going to try the salt wash. I tried salt wash wash for the first time in a recent video and I really really enjoyed using it so I wanted to give it a, another try. So I am mixing um, I believe it's called Steel or Steel Gray by Waverly with the salt wash and I know you're supposed to do like equal parts um, of salt wash and paint but I didn't do that this time because I didn't want too much texture just a little bit. So I am using this chip brush and I am just dabbing all over both of the rooster and the hen. I'm not going for full coverage because I am going to be apply, applying another color and I also make sure to get the bottom of them as well because I am going to be putting these in my booth. But I get, like I said, almost full coverage but not full coverage because I also don't mind if some of the black pops through either but once I get it as covered as I want I do hit it with the heat gun to speed up the drying process because I am impatient and I add a darker gray next um, I believe it's Elephant by Waverly and I just mix it in with some of the steel gray and a little bit more of the salt wash to add a little bit more texture and then I do the same thing with the chip brush. I am just going to apply that to random areas of both of them. And, oh, here you go. I'm showing you my heat gun. 
<laughs> but I am just applying this new mixture all over, well, like random spots. I'm covering a little bit more of the black areas, but again, not full coverage either. So I'm just doing this until I'm happy with it. And this is what's great about these type of projects is you can go full on ham with as much of the color as you want or, you know, coverage or not. So this is what I end up doing and I leave just a little bit of black showing through for that extra dimension. And once that is dry, I decided I wanted to do an extra just do a little something extra besides just seal it. So I originally sealed it with, um, oh, this is what it looked like before I did anything else to it. So you can see there's, you can see all three colors and that texture from the salt wash is awesome. So the salt wash you can get from unicorndustdesigns.com from Sammy's website. Um, I will have the link for her, um, for her website if you are interested, but I sealed this up with clear wax at first because I want to apply white wax. And if I just do the white wax on top of it, it's not going to give me the smooth coverage that I'm looking for. It's just going to kind of like glob onto that paint. So that's why I did the clear wax first. And then I just lightly take the white wax onto the um, chicken and rooster hitting all the high points so that it like those like I said those high points pop as you can see what I'm doing there I barely use um, white wax and I am in love with these I hope you guys enjoy and let me know what you guys think So this tray was actually a thrift flip before I really started flipping and this is definitely before my YouTube days. So I found the frame, like the tray frame at a thrift store, shoot, probably like a year and a half ago, two years ago, and I brought it home so my husband could cut a piece of wood to fit the inside to actually make this tray. Well, it never sold at the craft events that I had, like in the past, so I decided I would try and add a stencil to it, give it new life, and, you know, put it in my booth and see maybe if it'll sell then. So, because the tray already had a couple coats of polyacrylic sealed, like it's sealed in with that, all I did was um, put the stencil down and add a couple layers of white chalk paint to the stencil and that was it. So this is one of the other stencils from the pack from Essential Stencil and once it was dry I did seal it. Um, I did a quick spray with a matte sealer and then I did two coats with the polycrylic to give it that really good seal in case anyone does use it to hold like you know a coffee mug or or anything like that I didn't want anything happening with the stencil so I know this one isn't like a normal type of thrift flip because I did this a long time ago but I'm just giving something new life and hoping that someone else will enjoy it at this point so let me know what you guys think I really hope you guys enjoyed this video and these thrift flips. Please let me know in the comments which one was your favorite. I have to say my favorite, I'm pretty sure would be the rolling pins. I have wanted bookends for the longest time and now I just kind of want to make some more 
and I need to go thrifting to get some more rolling pins. So I'm definitely going to try that again. I also really love how like the chickens turned out. I'm loving those too. So I can't wait to hear which one was your favorite. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. If you did like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Please consider subscribing and I will see y'all in my next video. Bye guys.